guys, once again, we brought you things that are very helpful but hard to find and too small to make a video about them on their own. The best thing about the series is that this video is objectively better than the last one because we have 13 things this time. Number one, evaluate expressions shortcut. You won't ever need a calculator app again, at least when scripting in Godot. You may know that in property fields, you can input expressions and press enter to evaluate them. But you can also do this in the scripting window by marking the code and pressing Ctrl, Shift and E. This way, you can multiply large numbers or decimal numbers, do vector calculations and manipulate strings. It can do quite complicated maths that you really would not want to do yourself. Thank you, Bear Tuna, for submitting this very unknown trick. Number two the love child of mixed blending and additive blending. You can use different blending modes based on different canvas item materials. But especially for visual effects, you sometimes are not sure if you want to use mix with a transparency or add. Add is great because it does not obscure the image below it and it is generally beautiful. But too many additive layers result in pure white zoom. They just do not work well on light backgrounds. You can get the best of both worlds by using mix with transparency and putting the modulate higher than one. This practically gives you something between blend and add, which looks as good as add on dark backgrounds, but still nice on lighter ones. Number three, Smart Shape 2D. Smart Shape 2D is an impressive add-on that gives you 2D polygons that are actually textured really nicely. You can get it on GitHub or find it in the asset library. It also supports busy curve shapes and lets you define specific border and corner textures. There's a great tutorial by Pixter on how to use the add-on. It is really cool for level creation, especially in case you don't entirely rely on tile maps. Number four, a simple way to scroll textures. There is a very easy way to make scrolling textures that Nate told us. You can use this sneaky little property of sprites, which is the sprite region. It is not only good for sprite sheets and such, but you can enable wrapping on the texture and make elements like these with low performance cost and without a shader. Number 5. Print loaded scenes. Ever wondered which scenes are loaded when? We just did, when we tried to reduce our game's startup time. Turns out, there simply is an option for that. Just go to Project Settings debug. We're both STD out. And there you have it. You get these nice little prints in the console whenever anything is loaded. And it also prints memory leaks. Number 6. Ways to draw simple shapes. Many of us use the Godot icon as a placeholder for basically anything when prototyping. However, sometimes it can be helpful to have something other than the little robot face to create some contrast such as color rects. These control nodes are flat rectangles and you can resize them however you need. For other shapes you can use a variety of draw functions, for example for circles, lines and polygons. Just add a node to d into your scene, give it a script and add a draw callback function with some draw calls. This is really helpful to draw shapes on the fly when debugging. Thanks Stefano Gattolotti for the tip. Number 7. Draw Offset Property. A draw offset allows to change the center of a graphic. This comes in handy when scaling or rotating the sprite. Sprites have the offset property that also changes where they are drawn, while the control nodes have a pivot offset, which does not change their location. They can even lie outside of the graphic itself. Number 8. Attach metadata to objects. Metadata is a very powerful tool when dealing with dynamic data and for debugging. You can just attach any key value pair to any node or type that inherits from object. Just call set meta. Later you can check if the object has specific metadata with has meta and get the value through get meta. For example, you can annotate when an object was created or where. You can use this whenever you don't want to add variables. This trick was posted by Winston Yellow, who uses this for marking meshes. Really cool, thanks. Number 9. Size of children in containers. Containers are very helpful tools. When creating UI, they resize and arrange their children nodes automatically. When you instance these child nodes programmatically and need to know the resulting size or position, you cannot access it in the same frame as the node was added to the container. Instead, you have to wait a frame so that the container can update. This can be achieved with the line yield get re idle frame. Number 10. Ruler in editor for measuring. Did you ever notice the rulers at the left and top of the scene editor? They display the pixel height and width. 
but that far at the side it's hard to use them to measure distances. By clicking on the ruler and dragging it to the right or down respectively, you can create reference lines with defined x or y offsets. You can also mark positions by dragging from the top left corner. To get rid of the line just drag it back to the ruler by clicking on the lines end on the other ruler. It can really help when designing UI for instance. This trick was shared by Mumu Nimochi. Thanks! Number 11. How to run server and client Godot projects at the same time. When you try to run two Godot projects at the same time, say if you are making a multiplayer game and have a client project and a server project, the second one will say error listening on port 6007. To circumvent this, change the port in one of the projects by going to editor, editor settings, network, debug. Set a remote port to another port. Tom Tomkowski told us this trick. Thanks. If your client and server are in the same project and you want to run two instances of it, start one as usual and the other one through the project manager, which has a run button. Thank you, Gesh2. Number 12. Remap navigation buttons for 3D. In the 3D editor, you normally orbit with the middle mouse button and when pressing shift, you can pan. To change the settings, open editor, editor settings and search for navigation. There you can set orbit, pan and zoom buttons. The option emulate 3 button mouse allows you to use the function of the middle mouse button without pressing any button, just by moving your mouse and pressing the modifier button. This one was submitted by Saponef Games. Thank you! Number 30. Choose the size for generated textures. Be aware of the default sizes of curves, noise textures and gradient textures. You can set them. Oftentimes, they are set to a very generous amount that you will likely not need. For example, take a look at this particle system. We vary the color over its lifetime based on this gradient texture. Works quite well, but do we really need a 2048 pixel texture for the color of a particle that only lives 120 frames? Especially with simple gradients, you can reduce this amount quite a lot because there's still linear interpolation going on. This one looks good down to about 5 pixels, but we can generously give it 20. These are still 2000 pixels less. We hope this was helpful for you. If you want to learn more things about Godot, subscribe to this channel. If you liked that video, show us by pressing that like button. Many of these tricks come from our awesome community. So if you have a useful Godot trick to share, put it in the comments. We would love to read it. Oh, and by the way, we are working on a colorful roguelike that is called First of Us Fungeon. If you want to see us progress, check out our devlog. Have a nice day!